Welcome to Random Movie Reviews. I'm Nathan, and today I'll be talking about The Batman. So I originally wasn't going to do a video on this movie so soon, uh, just because a few days ago I did a video on Batman 89 celebrating its 35th anniversary. I was talking a lot about my nostalgia for that film and why I still really love it and enjoy it to this day. And I was planning on doing a video on the Batman just at a later time, but I woke up this morning to a really interesting comment uh, for someone really highlighting their what appears to be genuine disdain for this movie. And I think it brings up an interesting uh, an interesting factor about this film is that, in my opinion, this is arguably the most divisive live-action Batman film we've gotten yet, uh, even more so than the Ben Affleck one. I feel like Ben Affleck's take on Batman, for the most part, a lot of people don't like it, and there's only a really small group of very vocal fans, the Snyder fans, who I find very annoying, not because they like Zack Snyder, just the way they kind of go after people who don't like Zack Snyder. I'm not going to get too much into that. It's just, you know, it's it's a thing. I, I feel like most people didn't really care for Ben Affleck's take on Batman because of, not because of Ben Affleck himself, who's a very good actor, and who I feel like could be a good version of Batman. Just the way Batman is portrayed as basically a roided out version of the Punisher, like in stuff, and it just doesn't, that's not who Batman is to me personally. So I'm not going to get too much into that, but I'm going to highlight why I believe this movie is so divisive amongst fans. And uh, and I'm also going to highlight why it's my personal favorite of all the live action Batman movies. This is a film that it just grows on me every time I've uh, rewatched it. And I've rewatched it quite a bit. I should point that out. I really love this movie. I love the vibe. I love its pacing. I love it's different take on Batman in terms of a live action version of Batman. There's been animated uh, films and, and of course the animated series takes a very noir approach, which this film does that I feel like no other live action Batman has done before. But before I get too into specifics on that, uh, I want to read the comment that um, I, uh, I read this morning that kind of inspired me to make this video today. And I should mention... Uh, before I read it, that um, this person was not being a jerk towards me. He wasn't saying I was an idiot for uh, loving this movie, because I do mention how much I love it in that uh, video. Uh, he just was talking from his point of view about why he doesn't like it, and to me, that's the best type of opinion sharing, where it's like, you can hate a movie all you want, just don't attack anybody else for hating it, so I appreciate this person's um, respect for me, and not trying to make me feel like an idiot for liking this movie. And I'm not trying to pick on this person. I just kind of want to talk about their comment and put that in the bigger conversation of why this Batman movie in particular is so divisive. So let's get into it. So I'm going to read this person's comment word for word. So uh, if it there's there's some typos in here, but I'm just going to read it as written. Matt Reeves as the Batman is a shit movie, a hollow and heartless piece of entertainment, which points out everything that is wrong with the industry today. With no memorable scenes and zero rewatch value, which reeks of corporate infiltration, overproduction, and corporate approach in every aspect of the film production. The chemistry between the leads is goddamn awful, and Paul Dano Riddler is one of the worst villains ever, and is not the actor's fault is the script, which felt like... It is done by corporate teams with AI tools and screen testing for all chapters. Zack Snyder has a lot of sins as a director, but Batman vs. Superman is not one of them. If it would have been a standalone film without trying to be the start of a universe, it would have been a great movie. Uh, so I've heard a lot of complaints about Matt Reeves as the Batman. Almost all of them have everything to do with the pacing of the film. Uh, this movie is not super focused on just action stuff, which Zack Snyder's Batman very much is. And it, it is more character driven. It is more uh, influenced by neo-noir uh, storytelling. And so that's that is where a lot of the division I've at least from what I've read, that's kind of the heart of it. I have never heard this movie until today being uh, labeled as a corporate film. Whenever I think of movies that feel like they were made by a committee, like that's how that's what I think of whenever I hear the term corporate filmmaking, I think of like 
Ant-Man or something like that. Where like that film in particular, Edgar Wright, who is a director who has a vision, who has a very distinct style, who had a passion for the project, was fired because of creative differences, because Marvel didn't like the direction he was going to take with Ant-Man. So they brought in another director, a director whose name I don't even know because it doesn't matter, a, a director who has no vision and will basically is a yes man and will do whatever Marvel tells him to do. And that's how you get the Ant-Man movies, which are very middling, kind of basic, uninspired Marvel movies. To me, that's a corporate movie. That's that's a great example of a corporate um, conveyor belt, committee thinking, blockbuster superhero movie. To, to the people watching this video, do you think the Batman feels like that? Matt Reeves' take? Do you feel like this was made by a committee? I certainly don't. I feel like this movie was a passion project for Matt Reeves. He had a very distinct vision for this film. He was very much inspired by the works of, obviously, Frank Miller's writing of the character, year one specifically, considering the fact that this, I think this is a year two Batman, from what I remember. And then he's gone on to say that the works of David Fincher, specifically in his movies like uh, Seven and Zodiac, uh, influenced the film's tone. I mean, the fact that this movie feels so different from every superhero movie that has come out, at least from the 2020s, I think that's a testament to how uncommittee and uncorporate this movie is. I mean, the fact that this movie is nearly three hours long, there isn't a lot of action. Almost all of it is entirely based on uh, char a character study of Batman and Bruce Wayne. I mean, this is so unlike what you would call like a basic committee Marvel movie. It's just so I, I, you know, no disrespect to the person who left that comment. Thank you for watching my video and and expressing your opinion in a way that wasn't insulting me or anybody else who liked the movie. But I just completely disagree with every single thing you just said. Paul Dano is terrible in the movie. Paul Dano's Riddler is terrifying. He is real. I mean, Paul Dano is a great actor in pretty much every movie I see him in. And in this movie in particular, he is so unhinged. He makes me so uncomfortable every time he's on screen. He is terrific in this movie. And as far as the chemistry between him and Robert Pattinson when he's Batman, once again, you look at that interrogation scene with them, that back and forth there, I mean, it's riveting. It is a riveting scene, and I think their chemistry is frankly fantastic. I don't know. I mean, is this a hot take? This is the first I'm hearing of it, but... And Robert Pattinson as Batman, I mean, he, I, I, I really like Robert Pattinson. He's really proven himself to be quite a versatile actor. He's taken a lot of risky roles in, in movies like The Lighthouse is, is a great example and in, in a lot of interesting art house movies. I think he's really wanted to separate himself from the Twilight films. And so he's proven to me to be a very capable actor. And I, I think... His performance as, as Batman is a very unique take. It, it is the most tortured performance we've seen uh, in terms of a portrayal of Bruce Wayne's character. There has never been a Bruce Wayne who has come off as this tortured as um, Robert Pattinson's portrayal is in this film. And that has also been a, a topic uh, that has been quite divisive. So there are some people that make fun of Robert Pattinson in this movie for being too emo. Some people attribute this specifically to the fact that the cowl eye makeup, Matt Reeves decided to leave that on. Um, you know, every every Batman actor who's donned the cowl, at least from 1989 since, has worn eye makeup. Because if you wear a cowl, a Batman cowl, and there's no eye makeup there, it's just going to be, you're just going to see the skin in the eye very perfectly. And there are times where the movies have like tried to hide that fact. Uh, one very obvious example is in Batman Returns towards the end of that movie where Michael Keaton removes his cowl. He has eye makeup when the cowl's on and then when he takes it off, mysteriously, it's gone. I love the fact that Matt Reeves is like, ooh, we should leave it on. It, it, it makes him look grungy and dirty and it gives a gothic kind of vibe and it's practical. It, it is, I mean, every Batman actor has, Christian Bale, they wear the eye makeup because you have to if you want to make Batman's face look entirely covered. So people giving Robert Pattinson shit or Matt Reeves shit for deciding to leave the cow makeup on, I think is, you know, whatever. Tastes are going to vary. I think it looks cool and I think it was a it was a great choice 
I, I liked the look of it. I liked how real Matt Reeves wanted to make this Batman world. I love this movie so much because, like I said, I love films that are very character driven. And I love the character arc that uh, Matt Reeves gave to this version of Batman, where this Batman starts off very angry, very hateful, completely dr driven by vengeance and vengeance alone. And it's not until we reach the end of the movie where, spoiler alert, I mean, I'll, I'll write that in the description, but I'm going to get into spoilers, obviously. It is not until we reach the end of the movie where um, we realize that the Riddler is inspired by the Batman because the Riddler is going after the uh, corrupt city officials of Gotham, making an example out of them, putting them in what is essentially jigsaw traps. I mean, there's also been talk about how this is the darkest Batman movie. Yeah, probably, but it's Batman. So a Batman movie being dark is kind of expected and, and very necessary. But we find out that the Riddler is inspired by Batman, and he actually, in his warped, demented mind, thought they were a team. And it's not until uh, Batman goes off against Riddler's goons, who have been, you know, brainwashed by the Riddler via social media and stuff like that, just another touch of, of realism in this movie, that he has sent the wrong message. And that in order for him to be the symbol that Gotham deserves, he has to be driven by hope and inspiration and not vengeance because vengeance you know it doesn't really get you anywhere it just it just creates more hatred and more self-loathing in many ways and so a batman movie that really highlights that message in a way that i've never seen before in a way that feels like a david fincher dark mystery thriller and and it's not to say that there isn't any action in this movie to the people that are like there's no action in this movie like first of all if you only watch movies for action then you must be like i mean how old are you <laughs> like i realize this is a batman movie and you want action in it there is action in this movie let's stop pretending like there isn't the batmobile chase in this movie is freaking phenomenal the uh scene where batman tries to stop selena from killing her father and he's in the hallway, the way that shot. I mean, because the action is not like every second and it's used solely in the film to push the narrative forward. In my opinion, that makes the action hit so much harder because it has purpose. The action in this movie has meaning. It has meaning, uh, narratively speaking, character wise, there is meaning to it. And to me, it has so much more levity because of that. Now, I'm not saying people, you know, you are you can't hate this movie. You can hate any movie you want. I mean, I, I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I, can, I, I can totally understand people saying they don't like this movie because it's too slow. It is a slow-moving movie. Personally, that's one of the reasons why I love it. I love the world that Matt Reeves has created. His version of Gotham is like, it's the most gothic it's been since um, Tim Burton's Batman. That kind of gothic atmosphere is almost completely absent from Christopher Nolan's trilogy. And I love Christopher Nolan's movies. I love all three of them very much. Almost, almost all equally, actually. But that element is kind of missing. And the best way I've heard... I, I, I read it somewhere on Twitter. I wish I could give this person credit. I'm so sorry I'm spacing on the name. But the best way I've heard the differences between this Batman movie and Christopher Nolan's Batman movie is they said um, Christopher Nolan wanted to bring Batman into the real world and Matt Reeves wants to make Batman's world real. I think that is a brilliant way to describe kind of the differences between Matt Reeves' version of Batman and Christopher Nolan's version of Batman. Honestly, I love this movie. I, I love everything about it. I love the vibe. I love the I love the character uh, analysis and the character study of Batman. I love the relationship between him and Catwoman in this movie. It's probably the best relationship we've seen of those two characters in a movie. Um, it's, it's just so, so great. So yeah, that's my opinion on this film. I am really interested in seeing other people's take on this movie. Oh, and uh, I can't believe I've gone this long without talking about Colin Farrell, who is amazing in this movie. And I'm very much looking forward to that HBO Max series coming out. I'm so curious to see what that's going to do. I have no idea. I, I That can either go terribly wrong or super awesome. 
We'll see. That's coming out soon. But Colin Farrell's amazing in this movie. Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon, I thought was excellent as well. Yeah, I think every, and Paul Dano, everybody does such a stellar job in this movie. Um, but of course, this is just one man's opinion. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. What are your thoughts on the Matt Reeves, the Batman? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Do you agree with my takes on it? Do you think I've missed it entirely? Why do you love the movie? Why do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching.